see you sucker soon on a hot summer day. Coffee comes back in a nerve wracking way. The dishes and laundry take the garbage out. What a day! What a day! What a day! Welcome to Capital Region today. Boy, do we have a treat for you today. Oh my goodness. First time we've ever done this, but we're devoting the entire show to a group called Controlled Chaos. They're an improv troupe. And I saw them and I thought, they are so good. And I asked them if they'd like to be guests on the show and they said, yes, and I'm so happy. So who's joining us is gonna be Corey Haynes and Ken Clapp, Scott Payne, Pierre Radmack, uh, Tom Riley and Sharon Wimple. So it's a team of six here. Well, there is a seventh, but I guess he couldn't make it. But anyway, they're going to be doing some improv. And if you don't know what improv is, it's exactly what I say. It's improv. You just kind of go with the flow. So let's find out who these people are. Hello. And Hello. who are you? I'm Pierre Radimack. Okay. Thank you very much for having us here today. Okay, and up here, I know I've been contacting you by, via email, and you seem to be, you're the president of the organization, I believe. Yes, I am. Okay, and how long have you been doing this? Uh, I've been doing improv probably close to 15 years, been in Control Chaos, has been together since 2012. Okay, so how did a Control Chaos get started? Well, um, we were all uh, students of uh, Mop and Bucket Company, or Mopco, and uh, we met each other and hit it off. And uh, most recently, we uh, added Corey and Scott to the team, and uh, we've been uh, extremely pleased to have them aboard. Well, so they've got, got a team here. Okay, I think we're gonna do a change. One to the left. <laughs> we're improv guys, so this is what happens when you improv. Okay, and, and who are you? Well, hi, Ann. I'm Ken Clapp, and I'm the treasurer. That's why we're broke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, empty out those pockets. Let's make sure. <laughs> Nothing in them. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, Ken, how long have you been with the team? Uh, I started originally with Pierre and uh, Sh uh, Sharon and Tom uh, back about, uh, probably like Pierre said, about 15 years ago. And more recently, um, Corey and Scott joined the troupe. Yeah, so tell me, do you learn anything new each time, or... Or once you get it, you got it. Oh, most definitely. Uh, fortunately, we've been able to rehearse like once a mo once a week, and I can see the progress over the last several weeks, and we get better and better each time we we get together. And and the fact is that everybody should know they have you have to think on your feet. Yeah, uh, but if you, if you can't think, that's okay because your partner's there to bail you out. <laughs> we love bailing out. Okay, let's do another change here. Find out who else is here. Okay, it looks like Corey's stepping up, and your name is? Hi, Ann. I'm Corey Haynes. Okay, and what do you do, Corey? Um, by day, I am an attorney. Um, I'm also a magician, so I'm kind of a professional liar. Um, that, that's mostly oh, how stop, I make my living. stop, stop, stop. <laughs> uh, and I do improv. I'm a drummer, I'm an actor, and I'm a director. And you're an attorney. And I'm an attorney, which kind of uses a little bit of most of those. Well, not a lot of drumming, but the, other, the others definitely uh, fall into place there. Okay, so you would be like a Perry Mason? Um, maybe the newer version. I, I'm, a, I'm a little dirtier and kind of in the ground than, than the older version, but yeah. scruffier. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Defin definitely more noir. <laughs> so you're one of the newer members of the team. Um, I am. I've been here, I've been with Controlled Chaos for about a year, but um, I've been doing improv for probably 30 years. <laughs> improv is so much fun. I, oh, yeah. I've done that, and I've been in an imp improv group, but a, 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 slow, a small group, and we have so much fun. Every Friday we <laughs> get together and do this. But um, you also do a little... Uh, uh, prestidigitation. Yes, I am a magical fortune teller, so I have uh, spent a lifetime studying the, uh, the symbols left behind by our ancestors that guide us to the future. And, and, and mostly I do card tricks. Where are they? They're, they're in the yeah, stars. They're in the, you can see it, right? See? <laughs> they speak to us from the stars. <laughs> they do, they do. And I, and I, and I do card tricks, yeah. <laughs> and you do card tricks. Yes. <laughs> okay, let's do another switch and find out who else is here. Hey, come on. Hi, Hi Ann. My name's Tom Riley. Okay, Tom, tell uh, me about you. Um, in spite of what my the, Are so you previous an attorney? said, I am not. An, I'm a retired um, state employee. Okay. When I retired, um, I started taking classes at Mopco, and uh, I ran into, you know, Ken and Sharon, and they said, "Hey, come join us." And I'm going. Phew. 
somebody that thinks I can do something, I'm joining. So it's been a lot of fun. I've learned a lot. Um, I laughed a lot. That's the best part is that people are laughing in the audience, but at the same time, we're up here usually laughing at ourselves and at each other. So it's good. Well, one of the things that I find uh, funny is when I'm watching Carol Burnett, and I don't know whether it's staged or not, and they kind of crack each other up. And do you do that? <laughs> Um, yeah, I think they would misread lines to kill each other. Here you're just like watching somebody do something and they just go off in a direction and you're going, where did that come from? I mean, I don't even think like that. And so you just like laughing at them. So it's a lot of fun. It's yeah. great. It's good. Right. And you like working with this team? Oh, these guys are great. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun. So, and they think I'm funny. So, okay. well, we're people. gonna find out how funny yeah, you guys well, yeah, are. We'll okay, okay, good. No, let's right. switch here. And oh my goodness, what do we have here? We have the finer sex. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm Sharon Weppel, and I've been doing this with Ken and Pierre, and Tom 10 years, 12 for the other two, and then we formed a group. Michael suggested we form a group, and we've been together ever since. And let me tell you, rehearsal is the best part of the whole week. Well, because it's fun. It is. It's a lot of fun. And we laugh. We make mistakes. We laugh. We have a good time, and then we clean it up for the shows. Oh, okay. Well, that's not so much fun. Well, you know, we have to try and be adult. <laughs> Who wants to be an adult? I mean, let's just have fun here. Yeah. So I guess that takes them all in except for Scott Payne, right? Are we just that's missing right. Scott? Yes. Did I interview you? Yes, yes. Uh, you know, the problem is, is we did a little rehearsal here, so now I don't, do I do that or not? Yeah, anyway, <laughs> Scott Payne will be joining us, and he is uh, also, he's a, a doctor of... He's a medicine man. <laughs> he's a medicine man. Okay, medicine man. and his medicine will fix, amaze you, fix cure everything. you. It fixes, it fixes everything. It fixes everything. It's a magic elixir. Yes. Magic elixir. So we're going to, so who's going to start out today? Um, I can start us off Okay, if you I guess like. Corey's going to start. They're going to get off the stage and come in and on and... Okay, and so what are you going to be doing? Hello, everyone. Um, we're actually going oh, to start. Yeah, I'll um, pick you up over there. We're okay. going to start I'm with. Uh, bye, Ann. <laughs> um, we're going to start with a game to kind of get mm -hmm. ourselves warmed up. If we were athletes, we would have been stretching out good, but we're not. Um, so we're going to do something to warm ourselves up, and hopefully you as well. This is called the Alphabet Game. And in order to do this, I need uh, a title of a movie that should have been made but never was. Gone with the Bathwater. Bath so what this game is, is we're going to tell the story of Gone with the Bathwater, one person at a time, um, and we're going to start with a new letter of the alphabet for each person that comes in. So, uh, Anne, how about a letter of the alphabet? Z. Z. Oh, we're starting right at the end. <sighs> Zany times with that bathwater. I, I don't know how it happened. Anytime I looked, I can't find the baby. It's at the bottom of the tub somewhere. Baby? What baby? Does anybody know where the baby is? <laughs> Edgar, are you in the drain? <laughs> For heaven's sake, what, what happened here? How did this happen? Well, how do you like that? An invisible kid. <laughs> I think I got a hold of his hand and I can pull him up. Just wait a second. I got a plunger. <laughs> kid, it's not just Edgar the pig. There's a kid down there, too. going to be tough to come out. Nothing down there that I can see. <laughs> okay, hang on. I'm going to get scuba equipment and I'll come down and get you. I promise. Promises, promises. Do not believe anything that guy promises. <laughs> Queer situation. I still don't see it. 
and it's getting muckier. Roberto, he would be able to fix this. It's slippery. This tub is slippery. <laughs> Tommy, it's me, Tommy. I'm stuck in the drain. Get me out! <laughs> Unless we get like a crane or something, I don't know how we're gonna get him out. We're gonna get something. Voices. I hear voices down there, not just one. What voices? Are any of the other kids missing? We'd better call 911. A xylophone. How did that get down there? <laughs> bring, bring. You always get a xylophone on your way to heaven. Bring, bring. <laughs> Zero chance he's coming back out. Oh, man. Can we at least flush them all the way down? And, and that is how we play the alphabet game. <laughs> you know, theater is really about emotions. It's about being happy. It's about being sad. It's about being angry. And we have a perfect game for this. Because some days when, you're, uh, when you come into work or something, you get on the elevator, and there's somebody with a particular emotion that just infects everyone around them. And so we're going to play a game that we call Emo Elevator. I need uh, actually all four of you to come out, please. And uh, I need an emotion for Ken. What, what, what kind of emotion do you think Ken is going to have this morning? Boredom. I heard boredom. Ken is a very bored guy. And Pierre is going to have some kind of a tick, some kind of an unusual quirk about him. What do we think Pierre has? His eyes. His, something with his eyes. What, a, what about his eyes? He blinks a lot. He blinks a lot. Oh, he's, he's like Blinky the fish from uh, The Simpsons. Okay. And, and Sharon. Sharon has an emotion as well. What do we think Sharon's emotional state will be? Giggly. Giggly. <laughs> oh. And Tom, Tom's going to have another one of those little quirks. What do we think Tom has? A hand that flips up. The way this game is going to work, one of these people will get on the uh, elevator first, and the rest will follow. So I am going to get out of the way. Oh, boy, another boring day at work on the 20th floor. Oh, boy. This this is so boring in here. You'd think they would put some posters up or something inside this elevator. My goodness. Button, I need. Just use this hand. All right. Hey, how you doing? Oh, hey, how are you? Hey, how you doing? Oh, yeah. Good. Hey, wait, wait. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Well, how you been? Not too bad. Eh? All right. It's yeah. good seeing you. Yeah. All right. Could you can you push a button for me? Oh, uh, well, okay. Which floor? Seven. I, I can't do my hot tub. How was that? Wow. <laughs> That is hot. Well, we're on You've our way up. Out. We're on our way up. Ding. Ow. Ow. Hey, how's it going? Uh, good. Pretty good. How, How are, are you? you? Oh, I'm doing great. Thank you. Boy, it's like yeah. somebody has one of those flashing lights on in here. Huh? Mm, it's like a disco. I feel like a strobe. It's a neat oh. effect, isn't it? It is a neat what effect. What should I push? I suffer from dry eye. Oh, me too. <laughs> oh my God. You guys are so cute. Oh, oh this is my too. lucky day. Oh. Oh. So, you come, you come here often, babe? Oh. Yeah, yeah, I do. You guys are the elevator. What floor are you coming to? Fourteen. Wow. Oh, I'm going to eleven. But I think I'm going to fourteen too. I think we're on fourteen. And we have a bar. Hey, guess up what? Too. We're on like fourteen. Oh, here we are. Whoa. Whoa. Got, you we're guys like to come with me? Yeah. Well, we can't. We got to go to another floor. Well, then yeah. later on, join me on yeah, fourteen. Sure. Oh, oh, absolutely. Yay. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. All right. Bye. Bye. She was a lot of fun. Wow. Wow. It's like a what? strobe light in here. What's, yeah, what's the story it's great. of this? What a weird the, elevator this is. Yeah, I don't need a disco light this oh. way. Oh, boy, I'm going to have to... Visine? Why, thank you. Anybody got an eye patch? i got to cover one eye so I don't see them. Oh, this is my floor. 
All right. See you later. Good seeing you. Good seeing you. Oh, oh. Oh, wait. I'm going to hold the door. Catch you later. Good seeing you. Boy, they are the most boring people I ever met in my whole life. Oh, finally, now I got to go to work. And that was our emotional elevator. <laughs> Thank you all. Um, we're we're going to try something uh, something that we often use as a warm up at, right now. We're going to be creating some interesting pictures off the top of our head with objects that we think sort of go together. You'll get the idea of this as we go. For example, I might come out on the stage and say, I am a tree. I'm an apple. I'm a dog. <laughs> and now I get to take one out of the scene. I'm going to take the apple out of the scene. I'm a dog. Animal control, no collar. I'm a milk bone. I'm going to take the milk bone. <laughs> um, I'm a dog catcher. Woo I'm a guy who fixes nets for dog catchers. <laughs> the last dog ran right through it. I, that's the problem. I'm a coyote. <laughs> <laughs> I got to take the coyote. I just got to see where this goes. <laughs> I'm a guy who makes nets for a living. I'm a fisherman. I'm the mermaid that tore his net. <laughs> the mermaid is going with me. <laughs> I'm a fisherman. I'm the crab. <laughs> I'm a doctor with a topical cream that'll fix that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the doctor. <laughs> I am a crab. I'm the guy who runs the house of ill repute. <laughs> I am a crab connoisseur. Ooh, I'm taking the crab connoisseur. <laughs> I run a house of ill repute on a day that is funny, or a night that is funny. I'm a red light. <laughs> I am the green light. Let's go. <laughs> I, you know, I, don't, I feel like I should exit at the red light district, so why don't you come with me? I am the green light. Let's go, go, go! I am a guy annoyed after the 15th hour of trying to get the Christmas tree lights to work. <laughs> Apparently I'm going to be working for another 15 hours until somebody else comes out in the scene. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the guy at the front of the traffic line not paying attention to the light changing. Come on, I'll take you. Okay. I'm a really annoying driver. <laughs> I'm a guy stuck behind a really annoying driver. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm the guy further in the line who can't see what's going on. <laughs> I'll take a hunking guy. Oh. <laughs> I'm a guy really irritated right now. I'm drugs. <laughs> I'm the one fixing you up with my mother-in-law. <laughs> I gotta take the mother-in-law. I'm drugs. I'm just say no. <laughs> I'm the mother-in-law with a frying pan. <laughs> I'll, take, I'll just say no. I got a big old frying pan. I'm the fisherman who caught a big fish in his net. Ooh. That looks good. I'm good. the one with the fried fish and the chips. Oh, perfect. And that is what we call I <laughs> am a tree. <laughs> um, our, our, our last little game for this particular little segment of what we're doing is called Full Circle, and it's going to involve everyone in the company coming in one at a time until the last person comes back in and we make a full circle and you'll get it. Um, I'm going to need one more person out here with me, and I need a relationship for us. 
Who are we? Salespeople. We are salespeople. 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 <sighs> Can you believe they still have us out on the road? I thought traveling salesmen ended a long time ago. Well, once they bought those English cars, they um, <laughs> put us out on the road. <laughs> Hey, just because I don't have an English accent doesn't mean we're not in England, okay? <laughs> oh, I got confused. I was trying to figure out how this new sale works. The, uh, oh, see, the way that the sale works is yeah. you prop it up on top. It's one of those, those environmentally conscious vehicles. They already tried the electric cars here. Now they're going to sale cars. It, it's uh, perfect. It's going. It's a nice windy it's day. It's a windy day. Except it's, it's, it's taking it's, us sideways. This is not good. I, I'm going to go I'll see, see you if I... later. Oh, oh, no, we lost Tom. Hey, I'm the local farmer. I know you sales guys. My three daughters are up in the house, and I want you to stay away from them. You got that? Yes, stay away from your three daughters. That's that is what right. I will do. I will not go anywhere near... Hey, hey, you're a farmer. Do you have corn? Because I could really use plenty some... Plenty of corn out in the plenty barn. Plenty of corn yeah. out in the barn. But corn your daughters okay. are upstairs, and no, definitely corn okay. no daughters. Corn okay, daughters, no. <laughs> no daughters. Hello. Well, hi. I'm the new obstetrician in town. Well, uh, uh, <laughs> welcome. We don't even have a, a general doctor, let alone an obstetrician here. Well, they sent me over from the next county, and I understand you have three daughters here. Yep. And Proud the fisherman men are up here. The sales guys are here. Yeah, well, Is they it? called and they said they need an appointment. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to go check on them right okay. now. Okay, okay. Huh, that's odd. Hmm. Hello, come in. Hi, I'm from the Acme Vacuum Cleaner Company. <laughs> yes. And I have a deal for you, a deal of a lifetime. And? For a limited time, just today, the next five minutes, you can get our deluxe set of vacuum cleaner components for the amazingly low price of $299.99. Do you deliver? We deliver, of course. Oh, all right. Well, here. Here's my address. And I'll write you a check as soon as you get there. I should be there, back there in about an hour. Excellent. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Hey, say a little bit. Vacuum cleaner guy. Turn on your vacuum. Suck me down. Suck me down. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, holy. I've been sucking side around on a sail for three days. I'm hungry. You saved my life. <laughs> well, I am so glad. So, as a token of your appreciation, how would you like to buy one of our vacuum cleaners? I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> and that, everyone, is the game that we call Full Circle. Oh, thank you so much, so much for having us here. Um, that was what we had planned for our first segment, and now uh, I was going to do a little bit of magic for you, if that is okay. Um, Anne, would you like to join me up here? Absolutely. And here I am. Hello, Anne. How are you? Okay. Are you, you're a magician? I am a magician. I am a magician and a fortune teller. And a fortune Oh, could yes. you tell my fortune? Um, we could do that as we go along here. I hope so. Definitely. I'm uh, looking for a good fortune. Oh, I, I, you are a person who will always have good fortune, I think. You know what, since you have your hands full, maybe I will, uh, maybe I, I, I will. Can, I can do it. Okay, well, um, since I was coming on the show, though, I was really concerned because I wanted to make sure everything went well, and I wanted to make sure I was protected if something didn't go well, so I, I took out an insurance policy. You have an insurance policy? I, I have an insurance. Is a magician's person? Yes, they, they actually sell magician's insurance, and I really? thought it would be a really good idea to have an insurance policy with me me, um, just in case something went wrong, you know, you saw one you woman know. in half the you wrong never, way and, and it could you never... disappear, you know. It could, it could. But let's try a little bit of fortune telling and a little bit of magic all okay, at once. Does that sound good. cool? Okay, I'm ready. Okay. And I'm going to just riffle through the cards and as I riffle through, say stop wherever you'd like. Stop. Right there. Ooh, the 
six of hearts. Oh, you know, that's a romantic number. It, it, it is. Six is a romantic number, and the hearts are a romantic symbol. Absolutely. Each of the, each of the suits actually has a meaning. Um, the clubs represent luck. The diamonds represent fortune. Um, and the hearts, the hearts do represent love. Isn't that cool? I, I hope so, you're going gonna, gonna to keep that heart there. Yes, yes, yes. That's a very good sign good for, for love in your life and in your heart. That means you're a loving person. And it's good to see that. I'm going to go through again and stop me wherever you want, but a little bit below where we went this time. Okay, there. There. Ooh. Ooh. The nine of spades. Babe. Is that the death card? It is not the death card. It's a little bit different. It is actually referred to as the as the devil's bedposts. <laughs> Same uh, difference to me. <laughs> it means you're facing a challenge coming ahead. It must be you. It, well, maybe. Given, <laughs> it could be me, but given the card before, I wonder if it's a challenge in love. Well, you mm. never know. Mm. Now, I said I would do some magic with this also, so I'm going to try to read your fortune without even looking at the card. How's that sound? Why don't you take that one? And uh, you can show the, the audience at home, but don't tell me. You got it? You got it? You can show them. But do not tell me what it is because I'm I, not telling you. I, I want to. You, you can torture I want to read, me and I'm not going to tell I'm you. I'm going to read the stars and see what they tell me about this. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing challenges ahead for you, a difficult time. That would tell me that that's, that's a black card, right? You're, you're the magician. It's not a black card? <laughs> oh boy. We're in some trouble here, but no, I, I'm certain of this. It's definitely a number, right? It, it's absolutely a number. If you say so. It's not a number either, is it? <laughs> Yeah, this is tough, Anne. You're narrowing this is, it down, though, This is really you? tough. You know what, Anne? Why don't you just tell me what the card is, and I'll tell you what your fortune is from the card, okay? Just show the card. I, it's okay. It's Should okay. I show it to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Show it to us all. What, what, mm -hmm. it was the king. I wasn't even right a little bit. The king of hearts. Well, the king of hearts is, is a symbol, though, of a great success and an important success in life. And... Well, since I brought the insurance policy, okay. maybe we should investigate how we can make a claim on the policy. Let's see, conditions of the policy. All parties must be dealing with a full deck of cards. Mm -hmm. Close enough. Close enough. Uh, this policy does not cover enemy attack by an armed audience. Nobody here? Good. No, We're nobody's good. armed. Good. Um, this policy is, is, is valid Monday through Friday and weekends. Hmm, but I don't see how I make a... Well, that is the card you had. I am, I am thoroughly astonished, Anne. <laughs> How did he do that? Thank you How so much for helping that? me with that. Would you like to stay here for a little story? Sure, that I, I would love to. I would love to. This is kind of how I got involved in magic. When I was young, and I mean very young, I was nine or ten years old, uh, my family and I used to take a yearly vacation to Key West, Florida. We would get in an old, like that old hippie Volkswagen van. Sure. We would put the, the dog in. This was in July. We had no air conditioning. It was a really smelly ride. Anyway, Especially if you got squirted by a skunk. Uh, oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, and we would drive all the way down to Key West, Florida from New York. But when we got there, it was so cool. It was beautiful. You could look outside at the moon and the stars, and you already learned before my love of, of reading the stars and the moon. And there's a gentleman there, and he explained to me that if you fold a paper napkin just right, you can tear a single straight line in the napkin, and it will make a picture of the full moon. It will actually make a circle. Isn't that cool? And he showed me how to do this. So okay. if I fold it there. And I He's fold, a magician. I am. <laughs> And I fold it there. Perfect. Okay. And I'm just going to tear a straight line. You can watch me. I'm watching. See? Straight line. It's going to have to show me how he does this. It will make a circle in the paper. Okay. Now, um, if you would, I want you to see that's still attached, right? It looks like. Yeah, yeah sure. sure. Yeah. It is attached. It, here we go. We can see that. Yeah. See, we got cameras He's that can get in lying. there close. He's not lying. Um, can you pinch that with your fingers? And I'm just going to finish off the tear while you're holding it. Perfect. And if I did that right, we should have a picture of the full moon. Look at that. Yeah, that is pretty. <laughs> I should not be mooning the crowd. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, I got yelled at for that once before. Uh, pretty good, pretty, pretty good. Yes, it's interesting. But, you know, the full moon, how much magic does it really have? It can turn people into werewolves. We don't really need to do that right That's now. That's true. It could move the tides, I guess. That's interesting. But you know what has real magic, Anne? What? The first star of the night. Do you still have the piece you tore? It's right here. It's right there. 
I didn't touch it, did I? No, you didn't. I'm going to try a magical incantation here. Uh-oh. Here we go. This is actually an Edgar Allan Poe poem. Proud evening star in thy glory afar, and dearer thy beam shall be. For joy to my heart is the proud part thou bearest in heaven at night. Oh, and more stop. I admire thy distant fire than that colder, lonely light. How the and, heck? And your full moon has turned into a first star of the night for you How? to make a wish oh, on. Oh my gosh, that is amazing. <laughs> Isn't he good? Oh my goodness. Thank you Curry so much. Hayes right here doing some really magic. You know, if there are people out there that want to learn how to do magic, um, coming up on Sunday, July 30th, I am teaching a free magic workshop at the Sand Lake Center for the Arts. Um, oh, good. Uh, it is being paid for by a grant from New York State, so there is no fee, but if you're interested, you should contact the, the Arts Center uh, to register for it, because there is it's being limited right, to 25 Brian Sheldon, people. Right, right. Uh, Brian yeah. Sheldon, yeah. yes. Um, we're going to be teaching, uh, if you want some card tricks to bring back to your poker game at home, if you want uh, to learn a, a cool version of the cups and balls that you can do at school, whatever, come on out and you can learn some magic yourself too. So, so you could teach me how I could win at Las Vegas? Oh, I, you know, I could. Yeah, but we'd have to shoot you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I have, a, I, have, I have a special, special thing for that that we can talk about some okay. other time. Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so yeah, much, thank Anne. Thank you. I love my star. Thank you all so much. And now back to the chaos. And it, ap it appears that the chaos has multiplied by one this time as, as, as Scott is here to join us. We are about to get do a game called I Object. One of the things that you may not know about the members of Controlled Chaos is that in addition to being, being very well-trained improvisational actors, we are also the finest legal minds that the capital region could ever know. And in order to demonstrate this for you, we want to allow our members to debate a topic for you so you can see just how sharp their legal minds are. But I need something that is kind of a non-controversial topic. We don't want anybody getting upset out there in the world. Something like, is it okay to wear white after Labor Day? Or is it okay to wear socks with sandals? Something in that neighborhood. Someone give me a non-controversial topic that has at least two sides for these folks to debate. Fold or crumple your toilet paper. Fold or crumple your toilet paper. That is an interesting one. <laughs> Counselors, <laughs> who wants to be heard? Yes, Scott, come. Folded is the way to go because it's neater. It is more uh, I object. economical. Yes, counsel. I object. It's speed. I don't want to spend all the time like folding. It's not origami. It's the bathroom. <laughs> sustained, sustained. I don't want to do origami in the bathroom. Either. No, no. It's like this, your star thing. You, like, you do a bit of folding, and then it's a work of art, and then um, it's ephemeral because you just flush it away. and. Next time it'll be different. I see it's your very point. Lovely. I yes. see your point, counsel. Yes, counsel. Folding is much better because you 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 use less paper. It's environmentally. It, it, yes, sensitive. yes, yes, yes. Absolutely, being environmentally conscious is important. That's the key. Environmentally conscious. Mm -hmm. Less paper. Buy less paper. I object. Counsel. When you fold. Overruled. Continue, <laughs> counsel. <laughs> like I was saying. <laughs> Less strain on the ecosystem. We're not bleaching paper, and we're not throwing it out. I, I object. Have you ever tried actually folding toilet paper? I mean, it's flimsy. It just wants to crumble. It really doesn't hold a crease. Council's yeah. right. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. yes. Continue. I mean, it is meant to just be crumble, 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 crumble. I object. Yes, counselor. Yes. Um, if you buy decent toilet paper, or even if you buy dollar store brand toilet paper? It's Overruled. This. No dollar store toilet paper. No, no, no. Right. Absolutely so the not. Whole in, the whole intent is just to crumble it up into it. Yes. If it's all crumpled up, you can't take notes on it while you're uh, in That's the important. If you're reading a book yeah. and you find an important passage, you have to it be is, able to take notes. Yes, counsel, continue. It's you know, especially good if you want to I write object. on it. With a, yes, counsel? It you, you fold Overruled. <laughs> like I was saying, it's especially handy if you want to write on it with a fountain pen. I yes. object. Yes, counsel. Crumpled toilet paper makes a really good weapon. Sustained. That is important. That is important. You want a toilet paper a house crumpled up is great. Yes, I like that. I object. That. Yes, counselor. Who are you going to fight in your bathroom with the crumpled toilet paper? Ants. 
<laughs> Overruled. <laughs> what about uncles? <laughs> We're going to fight the ants. Yes. Can you fight the uncles with it also? Absolutely. I object. Yes, counsel. You can just take the folded paper and slap them against the floor with it. Sustain, sustain. You can battle with folded toilet paper. Much easier, especially if they're crawling on you. You can just take the paper. I you don't get the guts. Yes, counsel. You fold up the toilet paper and you hold it in your hand, and every time you wipe, you get your thumb. <laughs> that is the exact right answer, counsel. Why didn't you speak up sooner? <laughs> and that, everyone, is I object. <laughs> We're going to keep going here for a little bit um, with a rather fun game that requires some, uh, some spatial ability. I believe we are using Scott, me, uh, Sharon, and Pierre, correct? Yes. Was that who was doing this one? This is going to be four square. Oh, and one other, uh, Ken. We're going to form a square of four people. Oh. I, think it is, I think we are the there four we are. and you were calling, if I recall, Pierre. Is that correct? Oh, actually, yeah. yeah, yeah. Or is Tom going to call? I don't care. Yeah, Tom. Oh, Let's fight over it. I got toilet paper. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I win. A toilet paper battle. Oh, yes. I'm not as angry. As long as battle. beetles aren't battling in a bottle. Are you going to continue to babble, or can I start? I will probably babble anyway, but okay. please do start. Well, you go ahead. I'll just wait. <laughs> I can babble a long time, you know. Yes, when people tell me so to gonna, stop talking, I stop talking. I'm not one of those guys that goes on and on forever. One, anyway. to, the, one to the right. <laughs> <laughs> Just to get away from the microphone. So when, this is four square, and we're, we're going to do, we got four people up here. We'll have four things. What I'm going to ask you, you out there for are some, for these two people, where are they going on vacation? Somewhere exciting. Close. Cahos? Cahos? You're going to Cahos. Wow, they don't get out much. <laughs> Go to the one to the right. Wow. For these two people, um, what's the relationship? Who are they to each other? Brothers. They are brothers? Brothers. One to the right. I'm picking it. You two are rival opera singers. Oh! Okay, <laughs> one to the right. And what crisis are these two facing at work? The fax machine, the fax fax machine, machine broke. broke. So apparently you're working in the 1990s. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do we need to review or you got your things? I think I'll review quick. Yeah. You want to All review? Right. Scott will what, review. What do you do? What do you ask? We, we, we got a broken fax machine. What I don't do know write? how, but it happened. <laughs> we are vacationing in beautiful downtown Coos. One to the right. Brother! <laughs> One to the right. We sing opera. And we're rivals. Let's start there. La, 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 la. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just what? because you look like Pavarotti doesn't mean you sing like him. The great tenors are all built like this. It is necessary for the strength of the diaphragm. It has nothing but to do with me. food. look at me. I'm skinny and I can sing opera. But, but that is why I am superior to you. La, 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 la. I am the king of opera. La, la, la. One to the right. One to the right. <laughs> so the fax machine doesn't work. You want to know why? because it's 2023 and nobody's used this thing in 10 years? Who wants us to fax something to them anyway? Who was the guy that asked for this? I don't know, but whoever thought the idea of using toilet paper in there didn't work. <laughs> I, I think that, you know what? I think they were just fighting with the toilet paper one day. They wrapped it up, it got sucked in the machine, something, I don't know, but. One to the right. <laughs> well, sweetheart, here we are in beautiful downtown Coles. Let's go park it down by the falls. Oh, that would be lovely. I the know. falls. And if we do it when the sun's setting, it's oh, gorgeous. It's so romantic. It is. And we can I go to Burger so King for dinner. Oh, Burger King is such a great place. What ambiance. <laughs> it's amazing. I think Burger King is the quintessential close ambiance for romance, don't you? Yes, and then Duncan. Oh. Been brother. A long time. Hey, hey, hey. Brother. I mean, we were born twins. Yes. What happened amazing. to you? I mean, you don't look like me anymore. Well, um, let's see. You know, cigarettes, alcohol, all wildlife. 
bad decisions stunt your growth. Women. Obviously, it didn't work for you. <laughs> the straight life. Go to work. Well, work yeah, I do hard. That. I do. Save money. I do. No alcohol. I do. No nasty women. I'd like to. <laughs> Two to the right. You know, this toilet paper fax machine game, this could be a money maker for us. You know, there's all these broken fax machines in every office around the country now. Nobody uses fax. Like, we could make, like, like, basketball. Yeah. Get it, one of those things sticking up on there. It would, it would be the in-office game. We'd just sell, like, a hoop that attaches to your fax machine or something. Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah. Oh, that would be so cool. I, we'll, we'll just Watch be... Yeah, when was the last time you got a gig singing the opera for a Bugs Bunny well, cartoon? Got, Tell me. Got, Tell, that's the level I, of star I am. I got okay? news for you. I got hit with a line drive yesterday, and now I can't sing anything anymore on the opera. I can only sing high notes, so you're going to be the chief opera singer for our troupe. And now you can be the great soprano, and we can both be in every show together. That's right. Oh, this is brilliant. Yes, it is brilliant. And when the fat man sings, it's over. Okay, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone, so much. Um, we're going to try another game right now uh, that's similar to a game you played when you were a little kid. Everybody remember playing tag when you were a little kid at home? Well, this is going to be a game just like that, except when we get tagged, we leave the scene and a new person comes in and we start a whole new scene from the position we were in. I need somebody to join me up here for a scene. Who wants? Ah, Tom. Tom will be joining me for a scene, and I need a place in the house that we might be, not the bathroom. Attic. We're in the attic. Why did you want to come up here on a 95 degree day? I heard something up here and it scared me. I am sweating. <laughs> Boy, this window washing stuff is for the birds, right? I signed up to be a janitor. I didn't sign up to wash windows. Yeah, but you know what? Up here, you get a nice breeze and stuff as long breeze. as... Be healed! Be healed! That's how you have to do it, all right? Okay, let me try. Put your hands on the radio, folks. And be healed. And be healed. See, because I breeze. know that you took... Look, just give me the money and nobody gets hurt. Uh, I'm the control chaos treasurer. We, we, we don't have any money. <laughs> Look, are you an improv artist? I'm trying to find something, but I, I, there's, I don't have any money. Here, here, here. You're pitiful. Take oh. some money. Take some money. Freeze. All right, I got uh, two hearts. Uh, okay, go fish. Darn. <laughs> yeah, you definitely broke it. That's definitely broken. You're gonna be out of the game for at least two, three weeks. We got anybody else that can pitch back there, Coach? Anybody? Uh, well, that, that's a, that's different right there. That's it. it Come on, buddy. I've been stuck out here on this highway for two days. Just give me a ride on your scooter. What could go wrong, really? I mean, they say hitchhiking is great. Why don't you jump in behind me? Okay. And off we're going to go. And scene. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Um, we're going to try one more improv game to finish out our segment on this show. Um, we like to leave you with sort of a bedtime story whenever we perform. And so, can someone give me a suggestion of a fairy tale that has never been told before? Oh. Well, Rapunzel kill, kissing a frog. Ah. Once upon a time, Rapunzel, Rapunzel let down her hair and a frog climbed up. Oh, Rapunzel, give me a big smoocheroo. 
Once upon a time, Rapunzel let down her hair and a frog climbed up. Ribby, ribby, give me a big smooch, sweetie. <laughs> but Rapunzel wanted no part of that. Once upon a time, you know, hair frog came up. <laughs> ribby, smooch. Rapunzel wanted no part of that. But the frog had sticky feet and he stayed there. <laughs> Rapunzel, you. Once upon a time, Rapunzel, hair frog. Ribbit kiss. Wanted no part of that. Frog, sticky feet. At which time, Rapunzel reached over onto her dinner plate, grabbed the knife, and there went the hare and the frog. <laughs> Scene! <laughs> <laughs> and that is full circle. Um, I believe Anne has uh, another guest to talk to, yeah, right? I want to interview Scott Yes, here. that... <laughs> yeah. yeah, hey, Scott. Come on over here. Hello, Miss Ann. How are yes, you? Yes, how are you? Oh, well, where are you? Right? Yes, he's a magic here. And, uh, and you have an alternate name, Scott. Yes, I do. Um, today I am going to be Professor Quacksalver, Professor Phineas Bartholomew Jedediah Quacksalver, Professor PBJ Quacksalver, and I am going to be telling you all of the wonderful properties of the amazing miracle elixir, my dear. The amazing the miracle? The amazing miracle oh. elixir from PBJ Quacksalver, Professor Quacksalver. You can call me anything, just don't call me a quack. All right, there we go, my dear. Now, I have inside my little case here, I'm just gonna open that up, and we'll take out that little spoon and this here little bottle, and there we have it, and that is the miracle elixir, my dear. Now, do you have any other questions you wanna ask right now before we begin? Uh, 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 did you make that? Yes, indeed. It is made from 17 secret herbs and spices, and they are so secret that when I learned this from an Indian medicine man himself, um, uh, the shaman of the tribe of the amazing uh, little black feets, all right? Okay. Uh, because they had little feets, and they walked around barefoot all the time. That's why they were black feet. Well, would that be like grapes? They, did they do that too? No. No, okay. I don't know what you're talking about, but that's okay. You just go on in your own imagination there, sweetheart. Now, the amazing miracle elixir, as I was taught by the shaman, is made of 17 secret herbs and spices, and they are so secret they can only be collected in the dark of the moon, my dear, and I had to be blindfolded when I learned all of that. So the only way to tell is by uh, taste and by smell and by texture of the leaves, and they're so secret, as I said, even I don't know what they are. But 17 amazing secret herbs and spices, and I'll tell you something. The colonel tried to get those 17 secret herbs and spices away from me to use on his chicken. But it didn't work. So, in any case, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Fathers, mothers, sisters, brothers got something here unlike the others. Tell the neighbors, tell the youth, I tell your friends, I tell the truth. You don't need pills to cure your ills, my ailing. This'll fix her. Avoid them costly doctor bills. Use a miracle elixir. When Cousin Nell falls down a well because a mad mule kicks her, oh, what can cure her dizzy spell? The miracle elixir. Yes, as I said, my friends, just a simple spoonful a day. Now, I'm not opening the bottle because last time I did, I managed to spill it all over the place. Well, what's floating in it? What's floating in it? That's part of the amazing 17 herbs and the spices. But if you give that a good shake up, look, you never see it when the bottle, no, bubbles are, right. are rolling there. So as long as the bubbles are going, you don't see what's in it. But that's not important now, is it? Um, so just a spoonful a day. Mm, and it's... Delicious too. <laughs> and it tastes just like a amazing a miracle elixir should. Now, uh, the thing about the miracle elixir, if I can just take a moment here. How much is, does that cost? 
How much did that cost? Doctor. Well, right now the first bottle is free for you, my dear. But after that, once you get hooked up, once you uh, find a demand for it, um, then we will uh, have to supply you, and we'll talk about that later. But what I have here is just a little hand towel, Miss Ann. Uh, yep. Can you do me a favor? Just give your hands a good wipe on them. Oh, yeah. I know that it's a little warm down here, so no, you, you could be perspicating yeah. whatever else. Yeah. And look at that! Oh my heavens, Miss Ann! Gracious me! Look at that! But you know the thing is that the amazing miracle elixir will also work as your classic spot remover. We're just going to give those oh, a it's couple very of versatile. Shakes. Oh, it's amazing! That's why I said it's the panacea for all your problems. You just give that a little shake, a little twist, and look at that! It's back to the dirty towel that it was to begin with. <laughs> now, another thing too. As I said, it is the panacea for all your problems. Now, some people have digestive issues. You know, if you've got intestinal bugs or butterflies in the stomach. Notice how we're using an etymological, etymological uh, thing about bugs as one. opposed <laughs> to all of the, what I was saying there. Um, and if you have intestinal problems, there is a way to have us uh, decide and to um, prescribe correctly for you. And what I have here is all you have to do is you need to get me just a little stool sample and give it to me and we will find it for you. And this is my stool sample. <laughs> I made that myself. All right? And from that we can Don't decide we how much <laughs> of the miracle elixir that you need for any given day. But I will tell you just a spoon a day you will spoon your way to happiness and thank you very much and that was scott payne and scott thank you so much uh well actually dr crack and whatever crack sour. <laughs> sour. thank you so much okay and you've been on the show before so it's yes, always indeed. a pleasure i want to thank all of the controlled cast that's been on the show today they've been really fun and just delightful to work with and uh, I hope you've enjoyed them but right now we're bringing on another guest that uh, we have come on right over here so good to see you. Hi, yeah, I, and you? You, you're you're with um, styled and merged. Uh, it's styled and emerged. Merged. Yes. Yes, and uh, without the e. Right. Uh, nope, no. E M R G D. Yeah. Yes. With G D. So tell me a little bit about it because you sent me some photos, yes. and I was amazed. So tell me what you do. All right. So styled and emerged offers creative project support business administrative support, as well as wardrobe utilization support. And I just so happen to be the only wardrobe utilization specialist in the world. I think so, because, <laughs> and I gotta say, your hair looks so pretty. Thank you. Yeah, because I know you. she posted on Facebook and it was like, oh, it's so, so cool, so yeah. Yes, thank yeah. you so much. And this is the back of for anybody wondering. Yeah, isn't that cool? <laughs> Good. So what, I, so what I do basically in the three different areas is with the creative project support, you may see my work in a place such as um, NAMI New York State's Off the Mass Fashion Show, doing some creative direction and creative management. For the business administrative support, you may see my work with the new um, Albany Community Land Trust Gun Violence Prevention. I do a lot of work with them behind the scenes with their administrative processes. And for anyone, any youth from 18 to 24 that would like workforce development support, check out their Facebook and sign up there. Um, and then with the uh, words of utilization, you may see my work as you've seen here on um, Callaloo Theater Company. I yeah, because you them. were on with that and yes. you did some amazing uh, costumes. I guess yeah, costume, costume yeah, design, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Always I have to be careful I say words. <laughs> yeah, no problem. So yeah, so that's where you'll see my work there. And I also, I also offer workshops. So my latest workshop was with Ready Counseling Services. We did a wardrobe utilization workshop where we di dived right into the psychology of wardrobe. So what a wardrobe utilization specialist does is it fuses the styling part of wardrobe with the psychology of fashion. Now, I, I know you sent me some pictures, and I don't know whether, uh, can you bring those up? Um, oh, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I thought, in a way, when I looked at that, do you do ads? Because it looks like you almost do advertising. So I now I'm starting to move into that space of making flyers and starting to be with the creative project piece, work with people on their advertising for their businesses, their products, and what the messaging that they're trying to put out to the world. I can help them curate that in an effective and efficient way. Yeah. Uh, so where did you get this idea? 
What is your training? Tell me about yourself. Absolutely. So I'm from Schenectady, New York, and I grew Yay! up. Yay! Yes, right from here. And I grew up with a, in a very stylish family. So I was immersed in that whole fashion, being a part of your life and wardrobe, pushing a lot of the things that you'd like to do with your goals. As I grew up, I got into. I went to college, so I have three degrees: one in fashion, two in business administrative, and being. It the, works for you. Yes, and being a person that says I don't want to go to college and not use it, I said, how can I have some a structure that will help me fuse both of those parts of my personality and brain. Mm -hmm. So that's where my service options come from. I touch on the creative, I touch on the administrative, and then that wardrobe utilization piece, I help and support other people, really make a better impact on their life and save them some money at times. Because we will shop someone's wardrobe and show them how to best use their wardrobe and what they can do. So you can actually go into somebody's wardrobe and say, look, if we take the sleeves off of that or we do this to the jean, it's going to look different and yes. it will be spot on and it'll be yours. Yes, and that's exactly my last client. That's exactly what she, we did. She had a Renaissance vibe. She wanted to really like that medieval Renaissance look, but she had an office job. So we sat down and I looked at her wardrobe and I looked at her favorite pieces and gave her some consultation on how she can best fuse those without being a spectacle at work. Yeah, wait, yeah, because you don't want to go in looking with a veil over your head. No, we don't want that. <laughs> we Good. don't want that. Good. So that was what my last actual uh, personal client, private client, that's what we did together. Yeah. So you do business as well. I, I just, I'm when I, I look at you and I see what an amazing woman you are. And you're doing amazing things. And when I saw the photographs, and I, I could not download all of the I photos, know. but... Some of them were like 30 megabytes, holy moly, those are big files. Yes. But anyway, um, I was amazed at what you did and the beauty of it. So, Do you do the photography as well? Oh, no. I work with some amazing photographers. I've built relationships and I can continuously look in the community for amazing photographers who are able to understand direction as a creative director, but also they're okay with giving me input and understanding like the lighting won't work for what you're saying or the location won't work for what you're saying so that we can get the best shots for the for the. So the you're a t you make a team. We make a team that, every yeah. time. We make a team every time, yes. So tell me about about one of the most exciting things that you've done. We, the most exciting. Oh, we took over a motorcycle bar. And we did a Ooh. photo shoot. Yeah, we took over a motorcycle bar for the day. And you didn't invite me? I'm sorry, Ann. <laughs> Next time I got you. <laughs> but we took over a motorcycle bar for the day, and we just did pictures all inside, outside. Someone came with a motorcycle. I jumped on. It was just, an, that was a very exciting and amazing And day. what was the purpose of it? Oh, it was for when I was working with the magazine. So we were just getting some editorial shots for the magazine. Oh, okay. So that was fun. Yes. I mean, it just seems like really a great idea to be able to do things that are creative like yes. that. Do you have any um, like a, a team that you work with or is it all out of your head? Oh yeah, so I am I am my own team. However, when I work on projects, everybody that I work with becomes the team for the project and I do not make it about my company. My company might organize it, my company might manage it, my company might be supporting it, right? But where I'm always a part of a team. That That is what Styles and Emerge is about. Yeah. Well, I mean, the idea that you've been able to, you know, you get your education and then you decide you had a focus of what you wanted to do with your, with the skills that you had yes. and you're successful. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You. Uh, Jan, could I have this sheet? I just need to see, excuse me for a minute here. I need to say who's coming up pretty soon. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, first of all, I want to thank you so you're much welcome. for being on the show. You don't run off. Okay. You can just stay right here. It's okay. You can wait with me. And, uh, okay, I'm going to tell you who's coming on the next show, the Athletic Hall of Fame. The Italian Festival, woo! Open Stage Media is going to be here. We're talking about their national award, the uh, Schenectady County Historical Society, and the Scottish Games. Lots of things going on okay. here in Schenectady. And I think you missed the first of uh, the one show we did. We talked about the um, Music Haven and all the wonderful music that they're having there from different countries and stuff. Oh, so thank you. I yeah, I yeah. Music. So well, maybe I'll see you there. Yes, maybe. Yeah, good. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, I'm Aunt Perilla, your host for Capital Region today, and I want to thank all of our great guys. I don't know if you can pan the camera around, but thank the Control Chaos for being here today, and uh, love you all, and uh, stay tuned for our next show. Bye.